Good, uh, good evening to you all. Um, I have not made a video here for a while. It's been, I've just been, I don't know, I haven't had a whole lot to, to discuss just because I haven't been reading a lot. I've just been kind of uh, not really doing a whole lot because I mean I, I got burnt out because I was, I had to do finals and then the past few weeks I haven't just done it. I haven't done anything at all so I haven't read anything at all so I have had nothing, I have had no philosophical thought whatsoever so but uh, I've been reading a little bit more, so now I have actually some philosophical thought. This is a spider, by the way. Her name is Adrian, actually. She's a spider, ball python. Hey, babe. What are you doing? Alright. Anyway, um, I'm making a video right now. I'm going to make a few, few videos here, but I'm, I'm making a video right now because of uh, Conference Report. He, the, the channel is called Conference Report. He made a video um, stating how it's how there's no how, the, how there's no excuse for us as he has, as intelligent moral agents to eat meat and that there's no excuse for it at all. Um, he had a few he he discussed a few arguments against the vegan standpoint of why we shouldn't eat meat. Um, there's been the uh, naturalist thing where he, where he says that people think that that it's that it's okay to eat meat because we, we we've always ate meat our, our ancestors ate meat his response to that argument or the response to that argument is that um, our ancestors did a lot of things and just because our our ancestors did those things does not mean that we should be doing them like just because our ancestors uh, didn't have you know the te technology for a phone doesn't mean we need to go without that. Um, a second argument was, oh, gosh, his second argument was the argument from su superiority. Um, gosh, I can't remember, but he was he was talking about here here here's a, here's a video right here here's his video of you know, him talking about all of that. You can go right there, but. Um, he's basically, and then, and then another thing he says that, uh, um, you know, that the animal, you know, that that we that we are not that that he's he's basically char characterizing us as humans as high, moral, intelligent agents, and everything else, the and the beings that that do not have the noose intelligence are below that line, and. You know, um, I'm, I'm trying to figure forget the remember the other thing he said, um, but basically what he's saying is he he's he's against pain and suffering of animals. He's against eating them in general, and he's saying that it's completely unethically. It's it's it's, it's completely unethically, it's completely unethical and it's not ethically right at all. Um. But there's one thing I, ha I have I have an argument against him though. He he creates a line from from uh, humans he, he from between humans and the rest of the animal kingdom uh, or the the living kingdom you know and the the animal kingdom he char he characterized here's a line you know he this is the line and everything above this line is humans you know people who us people like you know all humans who are, who are who are intelligent beings and who are moral agents we are agents we have to go through um, we, have, we have to calculate things out whether to, to decide whether something is, is a good action or not you know we have enough intelligence to know that, whether whether something is moral or not and then everything below that line of intelligence you have all of the animals who are not intelligent enough to do this who do who are not because like one 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 thing one thing somebody put in the comments against uh his argument was well animals eat eat, eat kill and eat, eat each other animals will you know hurt each other they will kill each other they'll and they will consume other animals even animals of their own species and the counter argument he made against this comment was that because of the line here between you know, there's humans that are above here, moral agents, and then everything below here is not is not is not intelligent enough to be a moral agent to calculate what is morally and ethically right and wrong and what is good. 
Um, I'm thinking about Arthur Schopenhauer um, in his World as Will, Will and Idea, where he talks about um, he basically talks about the primacy of the will and, and self consciousness. I've, I've talked about this quite a bit actually. Um, he say he states how there's a will and there's a, a intellect. Intellect being intellect being the smartness level of the level of uh, how intelligence you know um, how complex are, is the is the being's brain like at the bottom of this in, uh, of of the whole thing of intellect at the bottom you'll have stuff like uh, paramecium or even a snail will be down here uh, with very little intelligence and then all the way up here you'll have humans which have has we we have the highest it, we have the highest amount of intellect you know we're the we're the you could say the, the most intelligent the most we have noose you know um we have that you know so there this is there's a big huge spectrum of intellect which goes from the very most simple being of like something like a paramecium or something like that and then it goes all the way up to the highest noose in human what Schopenhauer does is that he characterizes this intellect or intelligence or, you know, level of noose to be a secondary part of consciousness. Um, he says that the will is what is really primary. The will is the metaphysical part of the being. This is a hylomorphic dualism, I would say. Um, mostly the way this is, is um, the will is the driving force for, towards the basic things the thing the the being needs, such as sustenance, substance, things like that. This is the constant, you know, need or you know. It's you know. Just think think about any think about the think think about the similarities between a snail or par paramecium and a human. Those things desire certain things to live. Which means, you know, food, you know, sustenance, um, you know, things, things that will keep that 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 being alive. It it doesn't matter what the end, what what kind of intellect there is in the being, the will is the same. So what what he well, I'm specifically referring to the 19th chapter of the World as Will and Idea by Schopenhauer, and he talks about how. There's the will, and then there's the intellect. And throughout all of this, you know, whether we're talking about a human or a snail, there is a animal consciousness. It's it's a, it's the consciousness of an animal. You know, it's animal consciousness which has will, instinct, stuff like that. You know, this I think um, is the correct character characterization. Well, there's many ways that there's many ways that that you can t that you can discuss and characterize consciousness. But if you're going to talk about like, um, if you're, if you're going to talk about how um, how how the human consciousness compares to other beings, and you know things like that, I think that Schopenhauer's way, you know, in in his in his argument about the one aspect of consciousness, I think he's correct. I think it's correct that we are all animals, and that we all have a will which is primary to the to the intellect. Regardless of what our, of how high the intellect is, you know, it's always the same. The will is always the same, and there's still an animal consciousness, consciousness, laying at the base of of everything, regardless of what is there. So, to put this to the eating meat argument, I think. Okay, I want I want to add before going back into the whole. Uh, the whole uh, vegan thing. I want to discuss one more thing, but I'm going to come back in a, in, a, in a different video here.